Western civilization at its most magnificent, Athens' illustrious history stretches back more than 3,000 years. The city flourished during classical antiquity and was the birthplace of Socrates, Pericles and Sophocles. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 things to see and do in Athens. And just wait till you see what's at number 3, something you may not even have thought of, so make sure you watch till the end. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides. And make sure to hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So let's cut to the chase. At 10. Byzantine Museum This interesting museum offers fascinating insights into the Byzantine period of Greek history. Housed in a 19th century palace, originally built for the Duchess de Plaisance, if you please, the wife of Charles-François Le Brun of France, the museum displays a precious collection of Byzantine art. The Byzantine Empire was the inheritance of the eastern half of the Roman Empire after it fell. From the 3rd century to the 15th century, the Byzantine Empire ruled over the land of what is now the Balkans, Greece and Asia Minor. During this time, religious art was highly valued. Byzantine artists created masterpieces of detailed glittering mosaics and gilded icons. With more than 25,000 artifacts on display, the Byzantine Museum is a treasury of religious artifacts from the Byzantine period, as well as pieces from the early Christian, medieval and post-Byzantine eras. The collection includes sculptures, paintings, icons, textiles and mosaics. Highlights are the architectural fragments from early Christian basilicas and Byzantine churches and the reproduction of a fountain depicted at the monastery of Daphne. The museum's courtyard features a splendid fragment of a mosaic floor from the 5th century. Bet that seems some action. And next up at 9, Panathenaic Stadium and Olympic Stadium. Ancient Athens' largest building, the Panathenaic Stadium, has a capacity for 60,000 spectators. Constructed around 335 BC, during the era of Herodes Atticus, the venue hosted the Panathenaic Games, where runners competed in races around the track. The 204-metre long track was designed with four double herms, where runners would turn in the races. Around AD 140, the stadium was updated with new marble seating by Herodes Atticus. The structure that tourists see today is a replica of the original stadium, which was rebuilt for the Olympic Games of 1896. This modern era Olympic stadium was created in the identical fashion as the Panathenaic Stadium, with 47 tiers of seating and around its southeast end. The facility hosts concerts and other events during the summer. Attending a show can be a nice way to spend an evening in Athens. Next up, at number 8, Olympion, Temple of Olympian Zeus. Dedicated to Zeus, the Temple of Olympian Zeus, also called the Olympion, was the largest temple in ancient Greece. Though the Parthenon is better preserved, the Temple of Olympian Zeus was an even more monumental structure in its day. The temple dates to the 6th century BC, but was not completed until the 2nd century AD by the Emperor Hadrian. In front of the Olympion, not far from the entrance, stands Hadrian's arch at the end of Dionysiu Arapegetu. It's easy to imagine the grand impression this temple made in its complete form. More than a hundred enormous marble columns once supported the grandiose sanctuary. Only 15 columns remain standing, and another surviving column lies on the ground, but the ruin's monumental presence gives a sense of the massive size of the original building. The gigantic structure was a befitting shrine to Zeus, the ancient Greek's most all-powerful god, known as the King of Gods. Nearby, just north of the Olympion, is a small park containing the ruins of Themistocles' wall and the ancient Roman baths. The baths are quite impressive, considering they are a free attraction that you can easily walk into your walking tour near the Olympion. They are located right along the edge of Vasilisis Amalias Avenue, at the side of the road. At 7, Museum of Cycladic Art In the Kolonaki Quarter, the Museum of Cycladic Art was created in 1986 by the Nicholas and Dolly Gulandris Foundation. 
The ship owner Nicholas P. Gulandris was a well-known patron of the arts and cultural life in Athens. Gulandris's own collection forms the core of the museum's exhibits. Housed in a sleek, modern building with a facade of marble and glass, the museum's permanent collection includes more than 3,000 objects. The collection represents ancient Greek art, ancient art of the Cyclades, the islands of the Aegean Sea encircling the island of Delos near Mykonos, and Cypriot art from the island of Cyprus, dating from the 4th century BC to the 6th century AD. Many of the artifacts on display date to the 6th century BC. Temporary exhibits are held at the elegant 19th century Stathatos mansion, accessible from the main building by a passageway from the atrium. Now at 6, the Roman Agora and Hadrian's Library. Adjacent to the ancient Agora is the site of the Roman Agora. While it may all seem like one site, these buildings were constructed later and construction eventually moved on to the site of the ancient Agora. One of the easily recognizable sites here is the Tower of the Winds. On the edge of the Roman Agora is the ancient Hadrian's Library, founded by Emperor Hadrian in AD 132. Even later, during Byzantine times, three churches were built near the site of the library. You can see one wall of Hadrian's library and ruins of the Roman Agora from the street, but if you want to explore further, you can buy a ticket and walk through the ruins. Not a book in sight. And now at five, stroll through the ancient Agora, ruins of the marketplace. The ancient Agora was the marketplace and the center of everyday life in ancient Athens. For an impressive view of the Agora from afar, head to the north wall of the Acropolis or the roads from the Areopagus. The best place to enter the Agora is at the north gate of Andriano Street, near the Church of St. Philip. The Greek word Agora means to gather and orate, indicating that this site was a location of public speaking. The Agora was a place of administration and commerce, as well as the meeting place of the Agora to Demu, a civic decision-making group. Athletic events and theatre performances were also held here. One of the most striking features of the ancient Agora is the Stoa of Attalos, originally built by King Attalos II and reconstructed in the 1950s. The Stoa may have been the scene of Socrates' trial in 399 BC. Wonder what he was up for? Another key site is the awe-inspiring Temple of Hephaestos. You can reach it on a pleasant walk along the footpath that leads up the Agora Hill, Colonos Agoreos. This 5th century BC Doric temple is one of the best preserved ancient Greek temples thanks to its conversion into a Christian church which saved it from destruction. The temple was designed on a classical plan with six rows of 13 columns and the Ionic friezes appear to be modelled on the Parthenon. And now at four, wander the Plaka and Amphiotika neighborhoods. Between the northern slopes of the Acropolis and Ermu Street, the picturesque Plaka neighborhood is the tourist hotspot. The main attraction of this historic area is its charming village ambiance. Narrow pedestrian streets and the cheerful little squares of the Plaka quarter are lined with lovely Bougainvillea trimmed pastel painted houses, restaurants and shops. Tucked away in peaceful corners of the neighborhood are historic churches such as the Metamorphosis Church in the southwest and the Church of Capnicaria in the north. A leisurely stroll through the picturesque setting is the perfect thing to do when you've had your fill of ruins and museums. Metamorphosis Church, hmm. The Placa Quarter, along with neighboring Anafiotika, nestled into the slopes north of the Acropolis, have an abundance of authentic Greek restaurants with inviting terrace seating. The winding medieval streets of Anafiotika are also a delight to explore in the evenings. This area is famous for its restaurant staircase on Sicilus Street. Nearby, quieter streets are hidden away on the hillside, which conceal cute little cafes and restaurants. The area boasts two important archaeological sites on Pepopida Street, the 1st century BC Roman Agora and the 2nd century Library of Hadrian. Imagine not taking your library books back for several centuries. At three, National Archaeology Museum. Founded in the 19th century, Athens National Archaeological Museum is the largest archaeological museum in Greece and one of the greatest antiquities museums in the world. 
The museum is housed in an impressive neoclassical building with 8,000 square meters of exhibition space. On display are five permanent collections with more than 11,000 exhibits, offering a comprehensive overview of Greek civilization from prehistory through the classical period to late antiquity. The prehistoric collection covers the 6th millennium BC to 1050 BC, the Neolithic, Cycladic and Mycenaean periods, and presents findings from the prehistoric settlement at Thera. The sculpture collection exhibits ancient Greek sculptures from the 6th century BC to the 5th century BC, including rare masterpieces. The vase and decorative objects collection showcases ancient Greek pottery from the 11th century BC all the way until the classical Roman period. Don't stand so close to that jug. The Stathatos collection features minor objects from a wide range of historical periods. Exquisite little statues and figurines sculpted from metals are on display in the Metallurgy collection. And now at 2, Acropolis Museum. Another of Athens' top attractions, the Acropolis Museum contains one of the most valuable collections of ancient Greek art in the world. The new facility was completed in 2007 below the Acropolis hilltop and replaced the former museum on the hill. This huge facility, 25,000 square meters, and features 14,000 square meters of exhibition space. The unique layout incorporates an ancient Athenian neighborhood. This is one of the best things to do in Athens when temperatures are soaring at midday. Be aware, the entrance queue to purchase tickets can be long, so it's best to book your tickets online in advance. That way you'll have a guaranteed admission at a specific time. And finally, at number one, visit the ancient Acropolis, of course. Few sites in the world compare to Athens' Acropolis, with its Parthenon temple perched high on a rocky crag keeping watch over centuries of civilization. A reminder of the glory of ancient Athens, the Acropolis was the center of the ancient city and functioned as a citadel in its protected hilltop location. The most emblematic building is the Parthenon, the largest temple of the classical antiquity period dating from 447 BC to 338 BC. With its monumental rows of Doric columns and stunning sculptural details, the temple is an awe-inspiring sight. In the frieze on the eastern side, reliefs depict the birth of the goddess Athena. Other ruins of the Acropolis include the Temple of Athena, Nike at the entrance, and Erechtheion, a complex of ancient sanctuaries built between 421 BC and 395 BC. The most famous feature of the Erechtheion complex is the porch of the Caryatids, with six statues of maidens in place of Doric columns. For beautiful views of the Acropolis from below, head to the north side of the hill. Street-side restaurants line the pedestrian street of Apostolou Pavlou and look up to the Acropolis. Some of these restaurants also have rooftop dining with incredible views across to the Acropolis, showing the Grand Entrance, the Temple of Athena Nike and the Parthenon, all of which are lit up in the evenings. On hot days, it's best to visit the Acropolis in the morning and then head to the air-conditioned Acropolis Museum in the afternoon. Alternatively, head up to the Acropolis for sunset. To avoid the long line to get in, buy a Skip the Line Acropolis of Athens tour, which includes a guided tour of the site. Good idea. And there you have the top 10 rated attractions and things to do in Athens. Did you like what you saw? Let us know in the comments down below. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more fantastic travel guides. That's all for now. Until next time.